What is up down and sideways, all you beautiful people? It is a beautiful day here on League Unlock. Eric and Mark with you guys for it. And why is it beautiful, you might ask? Well, we actually have games that count on the record books to talk about. It feels like it's been about three years, Mark. 2024 season is here. LEC shepherding us into the new era of League of Legends. We got the new map. We got the new studio. We even got some new squads, new teams they taking their debut for the LEC. We are two out of the three days in so far out of this first week. Let's dive into talking, chit-chatting about some of these matchups. Two days, two viewership records. Already broken, peaking. G2 versus K Corp, over 640,000 concurrent viewers. You can then account for all uh, these other co streams that were going on that were pulling six figures on their own. When you're talking about the owners of K Corp, even Casual had like 50k, but 100k more than we were getting in the summer finals. And I know week one, K Corp's first split or first week in the league, it's going to be extra hype, but this is pretty insane. We got to see it continued is going to be the big thing, keeping track of these numbers. But instantly, the effect, the influence of adding K Corp, adding that type of brand to the, the league has been instantly impactful for looking at these viewership numbers. I think a lot of people had that excitement, had that hype, even on relatively when you look at the whole picture, the LEC last year with the experimentation, with the new format and how things played out at the international event on that down note. To come back with a mega home run hit here this weekend, smashing those viewership records, you love to see that for the LEC. And you love to see, well, actually what you don't love to see is the Malphite in the top lane. Kabuchard had a rough game. He was he was kind of abandoned and, I mean, Broken Blades Cannon, it was a lot of just 1v1 in that top lane. It was the other lanes you were looking for, two games games in not only does yikes still look like the best jungler he looks like the best player in the lec it's scary scary how quickly things have changed at a, at a place like g2 with players that g2 have where yike is starting to quickly emerge as that number one option as your main guy which is really scary to think about some of these other teams in the lec and certainly when you're looking at that jungle to jungle matchup having Yike perform at this level, continuing to perform at this level, and knowing that he's going to grow and gain experience, this is a good sign for G2 early. And, you know, Bo was okay in this game, except for one of the very last plays where he kind of gets caught out and cost them the entire game on the vibe. But uh, G2, a 2-0 start. Not super clean, but that's even G2 at peak level. A lot of the times, the games aren't the cleanest. Sure, I, I think there is absolutely room for improvement, for criticism, constructive criticism in this first week of the of the split here at this point for G2. But at the very least, one of the things to keep track of and, you know, kind of fluctuates in value, and we've seen it for certain organizations, you get off to that bad start. Even if you're performing relatively okay, but the results don't add up, you're behind that eight ball, and you maybe don't have enough time in these shortened splits in the LEC to catch back up. G2, even if the thing's still to iron out, getting that 2-0 important for the top dog in the LEC. And that slow start, the viewers are there, the hype is there, but it's a 0-2 start for Car Carmine Court. But no reason to panic. Number one, they've been competitive. The two most exciting games have been both K Court matchups. And more importantly, it's been against G2 and Fnatic, who are probably the two best teams in the LEC. So despite the 0-2 start, absolutely no panic for KC. Yeah, this is going to be the, uh, this was always going to be the roughest of landings, this first little start stint for Carmine Corp, especially as you outlined, G2 and Fnatic, the two iconic franchises of the LEC at this point that are at that tip top of competitiveness. Competitive matches from K Corp's perspective, absolutely. There is that, you know, angle, as just talked about with G2, being good at 2 0, now behind the eight ball at 0 2 for Carmine Corp. The way that you have been competitive and fighting in these games, I'm not sounding the alarm button on, on the crew just yet. Matching up against Mad Lions Koi to close out the week. So hopefully for them and for the fan base, they can fully have something to cheer about to go one and two. Fnatic, as we mentioned, had that first K Corp slobber knocker, and then they came up with a dominant win against Team Vitality. It's only game two, and what? We're getting an Umanoid sighting? This is about a month and a half too early. When this guy's at his peak, he's the best Azir in EU. I'm saying it. 
I'm flipping through my calendar and uh, this doesn't add up that we're seeing humanoid popping off like this. This is a creature normally hibernating during the winter split type of season. He's roaring out of the gates with this fanatic squad. As you said, that Azir, crisp, clean, controlled. Loved it from him in this matchup. And for Fnatic, this is great. You've had all things kind of, you know, almost everything except for a really big pop-off in the bottom lane is what I'm waiting for to get the check marks all across the board because Oscar was fantastic in that first game. And then you go to that second game, and I really think it was about what was going on between Razor and really Humanoid in that mid lane. No more Hillisang on this team, but the, the Psycho Award goes to Razork. Flashing in 1v5 on Poppy, getting the five-man knockup. His engages, he's got that angle that only he can see. He's, he's been training. He's been there in the dark depths. And yes, we do see that come through. That aggression, calculated aggression this time here for Mr. Razork, making sure it is that big play for Fnatic. And, you know, remember, Oscar Innan, he was just leveling up when he came back, had that injury. We saw him at Worlds going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the very best in the world. So this, this core that's returning for Fnatic, I think you're already kind of seeing them at the level where they left off in summer. We're going to get continued growth for the young guy in Oscar Rinnan and the synergy. I, sky's the limit for this Fnatic roster. It's, it's almost unfair that a player like Yike exists in the LEC right now and is so young and generating that hype because Oscarit should be that guy that everyone is jumping to of this new player, young, fresh, and really looking at the potential that he can build. It's been kind of overshadowed because Yike has taken over in that role, especially for an organization like G2. But make no mistake, as you said, that road, he was climbing up it towards the end of last year before things crashed out. Now we are starting to see that, that journey picked back up again by Mr. Oscar, and it is going well for him and Fnatic. There were lots of revenge games in this very first week, but the absolute headliner for it was Niski, now on SK, matching up against Mad Lions. You could feel the anger, the personal ready for destruction between Niski and El Yoye. You saw them flashing to be killing one another, but it's Niski and the boys getting the last laugh, handing Mad Lions their first loss. And Niski looked real good in this game. And Isma, as a rookie now, helping lead SK to a 2-0 start. Holy moly, this was a big deal. Yes, you said it. You know, those flashes going on early, you could tell something was brewing under the surface. There was some heat to this matchup. Of course, the situation, you know, El Yoya was going to join G2, and then he doesn't join G2, doesn't really want to be there with Mad Lions. Other Mad Lions players don't like that. And then comes the whole transition over to this new young Spanish roster, this young core coming through and El Yoya's friends kicking Niski to the curb, but that curb is SK Gaming and it's coming back to stomp you, getting through and getting this win. As you said, Isma is the other one that you will gotta be looking at through this SK, you know, this positive start for them because he has absolutely nailed the starting spot right now. And Exakick looks like he's been a peak SK form. Again, two games, incredibly early sample size, but him and Doss have been super stellar so far in that bottom lane. Uh, Frescoe, it's way too early to be judging any of these guys. The other three rookies looked really good. I mean, they dominated Team Heretics, which we'll get to a little bit later, but the mid lane, especially in this matchup against Niski, you see it and you're like, oh, imagine if it was three rookies, Niski plus El Yoya. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a hits different type of situation. I think right now, when you are seeing from these mad lines, we've seen plenty of potentials, plenty of these little sparklings, these little sprinkles that you can say, I see it. I see the talent. I see what they're going for and what they want. It's going to take a little bit more time to iron it out, get it to the type of level. Whether they're going to be fast enough at that for this winter split is going to be something we're going to determine really quickly here in this next week or two. And again, because it's the LEC, this different format, we always have to talk about, oh, it's only two games, it's only three games, but three games is a third of round one of this split. So it's every game is higher stakes in the LEC than it feels like some of the other regions. It is one of those adaptations you do need to get yourself into because you do want to give teams and, you know, understand that, okay, maybe that's just a hot start. Maybe this is a cold start, all these type of things. But that cold, hot start is, as you said, one third of the split already type of situation. So it is one of those ones. You got to have some patience and a bigger picture view, but understanding that's going to come at the cost of any short term here, which is still valuable in a league like the LEC. 
I've never seen a hype train, excitement train crash quicker than Team oh. Heretics. Matching up against those Mad Lion, Mad Lion Koi, excuse me, four rookies, and they proceed to nearly get perfect gamed. Do these old G2 veterans, they got completely smashed starting from level one. Perks was just getting caught out left, right, and center. He's bringing back the rise copy past the mark. No. That was not the look that you wanted from Team Heretics to get underway. They, they do find a rebound here as well is important to keep track of with them but certainly not the the debut i think a lot of them were looking forward to this reuniting project of course of, of wonder yankos and perks along with everything else and then what you saw really and i think they talked about it number one these kids are all right okay the new the new crew coming on through even looking at the old guard they've got some skills and number two it was a situation where they got behind they made one little mistake type of thing and what the enemy team did to negate them from having any opportunity to get back and, and make this game even more interesting, that was a big factor in it. And you saw that fixed a little bit more so in that rebound win for the squad. Yeah, thankfully, they look better against Rogue, but that wasn't exactly a confidence-boosting win because Rogue looked AFK for 19 minutes. It was such an incredibly slow game. It was two kills before 20 minutes. Rogue were making zero proactive plays, and it still took a long time for Heretics to close that one out. But I will say, Kaiser on the Bard in this game, that was probably his best individual game since 2022. Which is going to be a mega factor for this team, and will absolutely bump up the Team Heretic stocks if that is the type of Kaiser that you are getting. He has talked about the type of environment that this team is, of course, with that trio in that top side of the former G2 squad and the type of, uh, you know, fun that they do have and where he fits into that role. I think that it is a spot where he can adapt and, and join into this team fun. And we are going to see that on the Rift. I can tell you, this Team Heretics roster, they're having fun. They're feeling good about the game. You're going to see that in the results. And absolutely you will because we know we've seen mental boom from a lot of old g2 rosters as well with this core but um this is also you feel like even if they have a bit of a slow start it's a team that should be able to still turn it on even though you haven't had peak levels of perks in a while haven't really seen much wonder in a while but listen yankos was the second best jungler in the lec last split flacket was one of the better 80 carries in the league so there's still plenty to be excited about for team heretics it's still only two games in looking for a big bounce back against uh giant x for them who oh man giant x still hilarious for me to even say as a team <laughs> love love the name coming through there i think the important thing with heretics that i'm still waiting to see i want to see is the peter dunn effect right looking at the head coach and waiting to see that adaptation in draft or champion pools and looking through i think that's obviously going to take a little bit of time as we get into this split we talked before a little bit of time not a lot of time in this split that whole a, a dilemma type of deal but i still that is the one thing that i'm waiting on to see to get my full grill grade early grade on this heretics roster and we're going to make sweeping over reactions, of course, as is tradition after a single week. So once we have these third games under the belt for a lot of these squads, Adam is still a god. We get the <laughs> first win on Garen. Lock up the G for the crossword for him. And uh, I mean, listen, so far, all the map changes, everything's been great. I will say the champion picks looking pretty similar to 2023. Yeah, we were hoping to see more of an adaptation, more of a, a fluctuation in the change of what we were going to be seeing in the rotation of champions. Not necessarily the same. Still seeing lots of Varys. You know, you're seeing Ash, of course, the Aphelios. Uh, You know, what do we got in the top lane? Cassante coming through in there. Oh, we have Jackson Jungle now. That's a little bit... That was spicy, spicy. okay. I'll, I'll take that one, given the current landscape that we're seeing. I'm hoping things shift up a little bit more at the very least. Of course, a nice little plug. Come watch the LCS on the live patch <laughs> to see some extra spice, boys. And we got Vitao, little Xerath action. Okay, that was a little bit more fun to see. But the Giant X actually looked 
pretty good through both of these games. Jackies, that first game had an incredible Nico performance, but BDS, you know, the first matchup against G2, they had some moments, and I think this is still a team that we're expecting to be a contender in this winter split. Should be a top tier team in the LEC, should be one of those ones fighting for those top three positions. <laughs> Not necessarily, I think, the impression that I've, that we've gotten so far out of out of this debut, you know, first two games out of, out of this 2024 expedition for BDS, as you laid out, the Garen does come through for Adam, of course, that is, is going to be all the way through. I don't expect that to really be changing. The rest of BDS, I think, is, is, is at par at this point, but you do want to see and waiting for that explosion from the team. And, you know, squads like Giant X and SK were kind of, expecting to be in that bottom three of the table but the team you should be most concerned about after two games is absolutely rogue because they were completely outmatched in both of those games and i know malrang caught a lot of flack on this squad but i guess it's marcoon's gonna have to step up because it feels like they've got three passive lanes and no one's gonna be making any plays on this squad yeah, that is is instantly becoming very apparent uh, so far through these two games is that something needs to change. There needs to be some type of spark elsewhere on the map to get it going, to be proactive, to start pushing it, to give these options, to give these you know routes for someone like Marcoon to take advantage of. I think that we both thought that Marcoon was going to be a great addition for this rogue team and really kind of catapult them into a different tier than where they had kind of started to settle back into more of a middle tier in the LEC. I haven't seen that so far in these first two games, any type of real sign of that. And I think that, yeah, you really do need to get a fire under somebody's butt here on the rogue team to get them push and get it going to create that ha that chaos that you want to have a player like Razork then come in and control. Unfortunately, their last match of week one is against G2. So, uh, 0 3 yeah, looks like it might be on the horizon. We'll be checking in on Rogue uh, next week, is the safe thing to say. That's maybe not the marquee matchup to be looking to uh, on this final day of week one action, but there are a couple of tasty ones. First and foremost, K Corp 0 and 2 going up against Mad Lions Koi, which technically is a rematch from the EMEA Summer Masters because four-fifths of these guys were on the Mobby Star Riders, so it's it's a bit of a grudge match between these two orgs. There's there's certainly some familiarity between the two of them, and, and not even just the organizations and the players. Go to the fans, man. They're absolutely oh, yeah. going to be behind in this one and keeping track of the history for it. Can't wait to see that one. And Spanish versus French fans is going to be about as fiery as you can get in the LEC. You know that blue wall is, is hungering. They're going to be craving for a win and all the more satisfying to do it against the team that they beat in those EMEA Summer Masters. And then we got the surprise... 2-0 starts. I mean, Fnatic going 2-0 is not super surprising. But SK going 2-0 and in the fashion that they did, only one of these squads can start 3-0 now. Oh, baby, it's the Niski time. I'm rolling through with my boy. He's got the Revenge World Tour rolling on through to start 2024. I'm going with my boy. And, you know... Obviously, Ishma matching up against Razork, who looked pretty damn good through those first two games. The We're going to have to revisit every week this rookie of the split race. We were thinking, at least I was thinking, Zoe Elise might be hyped up on Rogue, but he is way back at the pack after a couple of games because both Jackies, Isma, and... I mean, Mirwin on Mad Lions, a lot of these rookies have stepped up, and they're already quickly becoming names that you're familiar with on the Rift. Well, if everyone just lets Jackie's play Nico the rest of this split, I think he's going to lock it up, no question. But if we're seeing something else and we're opening up the race, how good is it that there actually is going to be a race for Rookie of the Split this year? But we were robbed of it last year, even if, of course, Yikes, in, in almost any situation, would have been the runaway winner of that one. It's going to be fun looking at this one in this year so far in the LEC. That's kind of my early feeling is, is that we are going to see some of these changes, some of these evolutions, but right now at the very least, having a good time with these games. And listen, it's other leagues as well so often. This rookie of the split race is a little bit, you're barely even finding a single rookie. So very excited to have this class and make it so competitive. Uh, this this week, all these other regions were kicking off as well. LCK gets going on Wednesday. LCS on the weekend. Uh, LPL, I think, is on the Monday. But LCK, they did it right. They know what to do. Second match of day one. It's T1 versus G. 
Yeah, you got it. You, you, there's no way you're scheduling anything different than it is that T1 Gen G matchup. Let's see it. Canyon, Gen G Canyon up against the T1, the defending world champions. Yes, sir. LCK on the Wednesday. Don't you miss it. And they even say, you know what? We're going to we're going to tease you with a little DRX Nong Shim to really <laughs> kick things off. Because I say, if we put that as the second game, nobody's watching. They got to at least sit and go, okay, this is this is kind of a sour appetizer. But I'm, I'm waiting for the main course of T1 Genji, which we know Canyon and Owner have had some insane head-to-heads overall. And a lot of the time, it's Owner left limping afterwards. Yeah, but, you know, again, my eyes is going to be looking at the to the big mid lane, of course, the marquee matchup, Faker versus Chovy. How is this going to go when, you know, just last week, boys were playing beside each other on the LCK stage? Going to be a different time. Maybe he says, Keen, I saw that uh, Oriana mid. Why don't you try that again? <laughs> I'm going to have some fun in the top lane, get some solo kills, some nice solo time to CS. Oh, Cho what is the stronger matchup? Chove, Chove doing the roll swap with the Cassante. Or is it just Zeus holding down as the god of the top lane? Yeah, I think it's Zeus on <laughs> any pick that he wants. He could be rocking the Tebow up there. This guy was at such a high level uh, throughout the World Championship. We'll see if T1 comes in. I'm expecting them to have a slower start to the split because they had such an insane off season in terms of just whirlwind busyness after winning that world championship i wouldn't be shocked if they were one of the last teams to really get into scrimming for this split so don't think anyone should panic or be worrying about this squad if they do have a little bit of a slower start because there's a whole lot more for the new look gen g roster and all these other lck teams to be proven something because t1 are sitting pretty as the defending world champions but that is it today for League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks so much for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.